What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a HAPS preview. Now, this is going to be really weird because HAPS is coming out in about a month, the actual book. Uh, the leaks are going to be out very, very soon because people in the UK are about or have ordered the book basically and it's it's already out in the UK kind of technically which is kind of a new experience for me and I, I never thought it would be out in the UK before the US but there you go um, so we're gonna get leaked soon so I'm gonna cover all the stories uh, very very soon but this is a preview for the first story in the book which again is not the cover story it is not haps it is actually called help wanted just like the VR game of course so I'm very excited for this one. Apparently, um, apparently the preview has quite a lot of cool lore relevance and stuff in it. So let's get straight into it. Now, this part is just the audio kind of preview section because this part isn't included in the... You'll see what I mean. Yeah. Anyway. Steve opened his eyes. He was lying on a couch, but where? The layout of the small room was familiar, but when he had seen it before, it had been empty. Now there was a chocolate brown couch he was lying on in a matching armchair. There was a coffee table stacked with both fashion magazines and tech themed magazines and a large cabinet with a flat screen TV and a few different kinds of video game consoles. The walls that had been blank before were now hung with photos of Victoria. Victoria hiking in the mountains, her lustrous hair windblown and beautiful. Victoria, tan and toned and gorgeous in an emerald green two piece swimsuit lounging on the beach. Victoria eating an ice cream cone on a park bench, looking adorable with a dab of ice cream on her perfect nose. Victoria herself came padding barefoot into the room, wearing jeans and a black fitted t-shirt. Hadn't she been wearing a dress earlier? Then again, the room had been uh, empty earlier too. Steve was hopelessly confused and disoriented. Hey babe, Victoria said. You had a bad dizzy spell and kind of passed out on the couch. I bought you a glass of water. Why don't you try to sit up and drink a little? Steve had never had a dizzy spell before, but now that he thought about it, he had been too nervous about the date to eat his breakfast in the morning. He sat up slowly. You know, I think maybe I need to eat something. He accepted the water glass. Uh, the water glass? The glass of water and was surprised to find himself drinking it down in a few gulps. Were we going to have a picnic on the floor? Now Victoria looked confused. A picnic on the floor? You mean like on our first date. Our first date? But this isn't... Uh, sorry, but isn't this... Steve looked around the furnished room. I'm sorry. I'm really confused. Victoria sat down next to him and took his hand. Confused or not, Steve loved having her close to him, touching him. It happens, honey. It happens, she said, squeezing his hand. Sometimes you forget things. You have memory loss as a result of a car accident you had a few years ago. I don't remember a car accident, Steve said. He was a very careful driver. Exactly. Victoria squeezed his knee. You took a bad hit on the head. Brain injury. Most of the time you're fine, but sometimes your memory just wipes. Temporarily. And then it's like you reset and you're all good again. Interesting. So could this be like a robot situation? <laughs> that would be interesting. Like he was put back together as a robot? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just, yeah. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. This was upsetting news. He wondered how many times Victoria had, had to tell it to him. Oh, but I always reset so I remember things again. R Victoria smiled. Always, Steve nodded. The explanation was weird, but it also made sense. His sense of time was off. That explained everything. So you and I, we're together? Victoria laughed. We are very, very together. Wait, she got up from the couch. She got up from the couch, grabbed one of the framed pictures off the wall and handed it to him. The photo was taken outdoors under an arch of flowers. Victoria stood smiling in a lacy white gown and a veil, holding a bouquet of flowers that matched the ones decorating the arch. Steve was standing beside her in a tux, but the main thing he was wearing was an impossibly big smile. No wonder, Steve thought. His wedding day had to have been the happiest day of his life. Too bad he had no memory of it whatsoever. You're so beautiful, he said. It was a beautiful dress, Victoria said. Not just in the picture, Steve said. Always. You're always so beautiful. Aw, you're too sweet to me, Victoria said. She leaned forward and pressed her lips to his. It was wonderful. It felt like their first kiss. 
Daddy, wake up! It's time for pancakes! Steve opened his eyes. Two children were standing beside the bed. They were wearing pyjamas with some kind of cartoon characters on them and jumping up and down and yelling, Pancakes! Pancakes! The girl looked to be around four and the boy looked around and that is where the audio preview ends, funnily enough. So that's all I got from that. But we have recently gotten a new preview which is kind of a continuation. It actually skips a little bit of the story so unfortunately we're not going to re really know much of the context behind this part. But I'm assuming that this is all a dream. So I don't know. Let's go straight into the second part. Okay, so this is the audio, uh, not the audio preview. This is the actual written preview. Uh, and you can find this in the description probably. Oh my god, why is it doing this? Anyway, this is fine, I guess. All these kids with expensive Ivy League degrees who had already done internships or had jobs at the most prestigious uh, prestigious companies in the country. Steve had graduated from a local public college, paying for his tuition by working long hours at crappy jobs. And once he earned his degree, he was never hired for anything but more crappy jobs. He made his way to the second stool in the men's room. In this case, the term crappy job was literal. <laughs> Steve's tiny studio apartment was one floor above a takeout place called Capinerni's Fishboat. The greasy odour wafted upwards so that the carpet, furniture and bedding in the apartment always smelled of fried fish. Even Steve's clothes hanging in the closet had absorbed the smell. Sometimes stray cats followed him on the streets, breathing in his fishy aroma. As soon as Steve got home from work, a shower was absolutely essential. Sometimes he felt like he should spray himself with the disinfectant he used to clean the gas station restrooms. By the time he showered and... Oh, it's gone white. By the time he showered and changed into clean, comfortable, if slightly fishy smelling clothes, he was ready to eat something and get to his real work. He popped a frozen burrito in the microwave, grabbed a soda from the fridge and sat down at the computer. The project he was working on, Chip Off the Old Block, was a family friendly, friendly fetch quest based game featuring cartoony chipmunks. Chipper and Sons Limited? Uh, he was about halfway through the design and he hoped that a company would be interested in it, but if they weren't, maybe he'd try to just bring it out himself. He was tired of cleaning toilets and waiting for something to happen, which reminded him he should message Amanda before it was past her bedtime. Wait, so Victoria actually isn't real. I feel like Victoria is actually a dream. Ha. Huh. So is Victoria gonna be like symbolic in some way? That's interesting. <gasps> Unless Victoria is like Glitchstrap, kinda. Like Glitchstrap in disguise and, and he's gonna want that life over his own life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, recently, Steve's tiredness of waiting for something to happen had led him to join a dating app. He had always dreamed of marrying a smart, kind, beautiful woman. They would live in a comfortable house and have two adorable kids, a boy and a girl, but dreams were one thing, reality was another. Strangely, one didn't meet any attractive women cleaning toilets and mopping floors at a gas station convenience store. Occasionally, an interesting woman would come to the store to pay for gas or grab a gallon of milk, but it was hard to be suave with a mop in your hand. Suave? Suave? I actually don't know which one it is. For a while, he didn't think he was going to meet anyone through the app either, but then he had seen Amanda's profile and sent her a cautious message that only said hi. She said hi back almost immediately. After that, they progressed to an actual conversation. Well, as close to an actual conversation as texting could be. Steve had been drawn to Amer America? Amanda's profile pic, not just because she was traditionally beautiful, but because she seemed to radiate kindness. She had shoulder-length brown hair and a winning smile. She was a preschool teacher, and Steve figured she was a good one because of her kindness, patience, and sense of humour. The weird thing about their relationship was that even though they had been chatting for over a month, they had gone out on only two real dates. Steve worked at the gas station from 3pm until 10pm, and Amanda worked at the preschool from 7.30am until 3.30pm. They couldn't have found more incompatible schedules if they had tried. Steve grabbed his phone and texted her. I hope you have a good day. She texted back. A kid threw up on my shoes first thing this morning, but at least my day had to get better from there. LOL. Steve chuckled. He guessed that they both had to deal with more than just their fair share of grossness at their jobs. He typed LOL if things went down <laughs> downhill from there. It'd be pretty bad. I'll let you get some rest. Good night. 
She texted back, night night, with a sleepy face emoji. Steve smiled, set aside his phone and settled back in to work on his game until he was too tired to stay awake anymore. As soon as Steve opened the door of, his, of the convenience store, his manager, a humorous middle-aged man with the unfortunate name of Gilbert Hurlbut, <laughs> looked up from his phone and said, Some kid spilled about a gallon of blue slushy over by the back left cooler. Go mop it up. No problem, Steve said, which was what he always said to Mr. Hurlbut. Uh, Hurlbut, sorry. It was the path of least resistance. He went to the janitorial closet and set the mop bucket under the faucet in the utility sink. Would it have killed Mr. Hurlbut to say hello before he started barking orders? Steve poured some cleaning solution into the filling bucket and thought, not for the first time, about the bizarreness of Mr. Hurlbut's name. Mr. Hurlbut... But Mr. Hurlbut's parents, presumably Mr. Hurlbut Sr. and Mrs. Hurlbut, this is really difficult to say, knew that they were having a child who would be saddled with their ridiculous last name. So why not give the kid a normal name like Matthew or David or something instead of saddling him with an equally unwieldy first name? Of course, that being said, Mr. Hurlbut could choose to go by Gil or Bert, but instead the name Gilbert was uh, stitched right over the breast pocket of his uniform shirt. Steve's wandering thoughts resulted in the mop bucket overflowing. He tilted it and poured out some of the excess water, then carried the bucket and mop to the back of the store to clean up the sticky mess. Steve's hands were mopping, but his mind was on his game and what he would work on as soon as he got home from this meaningless job. I said, can you spare me a moment? Steve had been so preoccupied, he hadn't even noticed that a man was standing right next to him trying to get his attention. The man in question did not resemble the customers they usually got in the store. Exhausted, inexpensively dressed people coming from or going to night shift jobs. Even though Steve didn't know much about clothes, he could tell this man's dark suit was expensive. It was spotless and wrinkle-free and seemed to have been tailored to the contours of his body. I'm sorry, can I help you? Steve said. I think perhaps you can, the man said. He looked... Uh, sorry, he had strong chiselled figures and a haircut that looked as expensive as his suit. That is, if you're Steve Snodgrass. Steve Snodgrass? I am, Steve said, pointing to his name tag and immediately feeling like an idiot. Oh, so he has a weird name as well. Okay. Uh, could you step outside with me for a moment? The man asked. The situation was getting stranger and stranger. Steve thought... Uh, sorry, Steve had thought the man just needed help locating an item in the store, but it now it appeared this guy wanted something from him personally. Steve felt nervous. Was the guy a cop? A serial killer? I don't know about that, sir, Steve, Steve said. I just started my shift, so I'm not due for a break yet. I don't want to get in trouble with my boss. Well, if you step outside with me, you may find yourself working for another boss and for a great deal more money. He smiled. His teeth were perfect. Steve was growing more confused by the moment. What's this man in the Mafia? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. Hmm. Perhaps this will help, the man said, handing Steve a business card. Steve looked down at the card and read, Brock Edwards, Talent Acquisition, Fazbear Entertainment. Yes. It took a few seconds for the name Fazbear to ring a bell. But then Steve remembered the kids' pizza places that had once been wildly popular, but had suffered a downfall after a variety of criminal allegations. There had been talks of murders, though Steve didn't remember how many. There was weirder stuff too. Stories about paranormal events and that kind of nonsense. Fazbear frights! <laughs> uh, Steve was still puzzled, but he had to admit he was curious too. Maybe I could step outside for just one minute, he said. Very good, Mr. Snodgrass, Mr. Edwards said, following Steve out the back door. They stood out back near the dumpster. The fumes of garbage hung in the air. You are familiar with Fazbear Entertainment? Mr. Edwards asked. Kind of, Steve said. I mean, I went to the pizza place a couple of times as a kid. Birthday parties and that kind of thing. And also, I know a little about the scandals. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of people know about Fazbear Entertainment, Mr. Edwards said. Over the past few years, there have been a number of individuals determined to smear our company's reputation by spreading terrible rumours. <laughs> Oh my god, I love this story already. Just from this preview, I love this story 
because this guy has just, has like been hired by Fatima Entertainment, he knows 100% that they're not just rumours. He, he knows that all of the rumours are true. And he's trying to cover up all of Fatima Entertainment's tracks because of Afton. I love this. This is so good. And surely this has got to be in the game's timeline, right? Way, 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 way. So, I'm assuming what's about to happen, I'm sorry to keep stopping, I'm assuming what's about to happen is Steve is about to be hired to create the, um, the virtual reality game that we see in FNAF VR to cover up the tracks of Fazbear Entertainment, right? So, that would mean that Steve is the indie developer, aka Scott Cawthon in Universe. That's really cool. That's really, really cool if that's what we're getting right here. No way. And, and this story is called Help Wanted. It has to be that. This has to be a Help Wanted prequel. Okay, this is cool. Um, yeah, and of course, the public dines on that kind of filth. He straightened his already straight tie, and so as a result, Fazbear Entertainment is in need of some rebranding. Okay, but I still don't see what this has to do with me. Mr. Edwards looked Steve up and down. You are a game de designer, are you not? An aspiring one, I guess you could say. How did this guy know he made games? You sell yourself short, Mr. Snodgrass. You've posted two games online and they were quite good. <laughs> <coughs> I wish getting a job was this easy. Um, uh, thanks, Steve said, though he still wasn't sure how this guy found out about his games. He wondered what else Brock Edwards knew about him. And so here's where you come in, Mr. Edwards said. In an effort to laugh off our detractors, Fazbear Entertainment wants to put a line, put out a line of video games based on the lies that have been spread about the company. Horror games. You mean like horror games based on what people say happened in the old pizza places? Steve said. The idea seemed distasteful, at best, cruel at worst. Yes, Mr. Edwards said. They should be scary, but at the same time they should poke fun at the ridiculousness of those libelous rumours and accusations. He put on a smile that looked calculated. We'd like you to develop a series of four games for us, Mr. Snodgrass. I think you'd find the compensation much more generous than what you're currently being paid for. Uh, mopping. <laughs> a job offering game development. It was what Steve had dreamed of his entire life. So why did it feel so weird and wrong? We'd want you to start right away, of course. We would fly you to a remote location where you'd have everything you need to work on the game, plus everything you need to live comfortably, a spacious condomin condominium. <coughs> Sorry. Condominium. Uh, personal chef, staff to run your errands and do your laundry. This sounds amazing, by the way. I w if I was given this offer, I would take it 2,000 times. Like, even if I knew it was Fazbear Entertainment. Uh, a home gym, if you choose to use it. He looked dis dis disdainfully. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. At Steve's gym-free physique. We could give you until Friday to tie up any loose ends. It's an incredible opportunity, Mr. Snodgrass. What do you say? Horror games, huh? Steve said, stalling. If they were horror games based on ghosts and goblins or other purely fictional characters, he wouldn't have a problem with them. But horror games based on what he had understood to be real murders made him feel queasy. Fazbear Entertainment said the murders weren't real. But they would say that, wouldn't they? Yes! Oh, I love this! This is so good! <laughs> That's right, Mr. Edwards said. They'd need to be based in the Fazbear Entertainment universe, but you'd have a lot of creative, free creative freedom within those bounds. But I couldn't work on them here. There was something troubling about this whole situation that he couldn't quite put his finger on. No, the company was very specific of that. They don't want any chance of leaks. Haha, <laughs> okay. Leaving town for a long period of time was another sticking point. It was hard enough to see Amanda giving their differing work schedules. They hadn't gotten close, and that's the end. <laughs> It ends on another cliffhanger, kind of. Not a cliffhanger, but... Uh, I have a feeling Victoria is going to come in a lot later in the story. Like, come back, kind of. And um, that's how Mr. Edwards... I'm uh, Sorry, that's how uh, Steve is going to... I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where this story is going, but I love where this story is going. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, concept for a story so far. And I think it's got a lot of potential. I just cannot wait to see where it goes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, leaks of Haps will be out very soon, I'm pretty sure. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, 
Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later. Goodbye.